What's up guys, hope you're having a good day. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you something that I've been working really hard on over the last year. So if you like football or betting on sports, stick around because the stuff that I'm gonna be going through may be of interest to you. Now, I don't usually record videos like this, so it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So if I look down at my notes and stuff, a little bit more than usual, I apologize. It's just a lot of detail to cover in this video and I don't wanna miss anything out. So as many of you guys know, I earn a living from live betting on the UFC, which sounds amazing, right? It sounds like the dream job. And in a perfect world, it would be, you know, what would be better than earning money from watching and betting on sports? But as many of you will also know, as soon as you start to make a little bit of money, you know, betting on the UFC, betting sites will shut you down. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule, tiny, tiny little nuances, but ultimately it is very, very difficult to earn a lot of money live betting on the UFC because bookies set the maximum amount of money you can bet on fighters live very small to protect themselves and then as soon as you make just a few thousand dollars profit they will shut you down and on my website sorry on my youtube channel we've obviously got you know quite a few videos you know which show me having accounts closed down for making too much money live betting the ufc which is a big problem because it gives me no security at all i don't know how much money I'm going to be earning from one month to the next because I don't know when my betting accounts are going to be closed down. I don't know how much the betting sites are going to allow me to earn from those betting accounts. So very little security with the UFC live betting. And to be honest with you, it's one of those things that has been a thorn in my side since I started doing this. So I started live betting the UFC around 14 years ago now. And very, very early on, I was profitable. And I remember that feeling of euphoria when I started to grow betting accounts quite rapidly and I was making more money than I ever thought would be possible. You know, it was an absolutely incredible period of my life. I remember the euphoria of thinking, my God, I'm gonna be a millionaire really quickly if I continue on this path. Because once compound interest kicks in, we all know how fast these account balances can grow. And I remember one night I was living in like a really small apartment in a rough area of the city uh, you know newborn baby you know my, my 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 partner who was still with there with me at the time i remember running into the living room we were dead broke we couldn't afford food couldn't afford to pay the bills we were in loads of debt it was a tough time i remember saying to her babe like i've cracked it i've i've fixed all our problems i've solved it i'm gonna make millions from gambling like uh, all our problems are going to be over soon and then i remember having my first ever betting account closed down i remember being absolutely crushed as the realization hit me that the, the, this was something that wasn't going to be able to you know make me financially free make these millions because ultimately bookies won't let you you know they'll shut you down far beyond you know you get into that level and as a result it's always been one of those things which it's just been a massive frustration in my life because I've got these set of skills that I can't use to their full potential. I should have been a millionaire a really, really long time ago. But the fact that bookies close you down as soon as you start to make a bit of cash, it just puts a ceiling. It just puts a cap on how much you can earn and how far you can go. So it's always been a thorn in my side. It's always been a frustration. And even now, after 14 years, every single time I get a betting account closed down, it is still like a fucking dagger in my heart. It still hurts because it's that demoralizing feeling of, you know, I've worked really hard to build this account up. Now I'm back to square one. I've got to go find another account. So about a year ago, I started to live bet football pretty seriously because, of course, with football, you can use betting exchanges and you can also use international brokerages. And as you can see, it's gone pretty well. And the rest of this presentation is me basically talking to you about the journey that I've been on over the last year and why now, uh, you know, I'd like to share some of the stuff I've been working on with you guys. So why did I choose football? Well, football's always been a big part of my life. You know, there was a point in my life where if I wasn't playing football, I was talking about football to my friends. I was either watching football or you know, I was playing on FIFA. It, it completely consumed me. It's always been a massive part of my life. You know, you could see here, you know, in this picture, ever since I could practically walk, I was kicking a ball. And that's mainly down to this fucking legend here. See this guy here? He's my dad. 
absolute fucking legend and literally from the age uh, that i could walk he was taking me to my local football club cardiff city to watch games like we'd go pretty much every weekend every saturday afternoon my mum would work on saturday afternoons part-time in a shop it would be my dad's day off so he would work throughout the week he would take us to the football here you can see him with me and my sister on our way to a game i am uh, <clears throat> i'm rocking everything there man full kit wanker we got the goalkeeper gloves and the uh, and the cardiff hat as well you know what i mean the whole fucking nine yards but i absolutely loved football it was my entire life for a very very long time uh, you can see me here on the far right in a, in a football picture the only dude not smiling as well you know what i mean football serious business for me this is not a joke everyone's happy smiley fuck that football is war you know what i mean football's war you know what bill shankly said football's life and death that's why i'm dead serious here but football's always been a massive part of my life you know in my in it's quite sad actually but in my early 20s and when i was like 18 19 years old you know my friends would be going out clubbing all the time getting drunk chasing girls every saturday i would be traveling all across the uk watching my local club cardiff city i've been to almost every single stadium in the uk across all the football leagues premier league championship league one league two i've been to a lot of the stadiums in scotland as well went all over the country following cardiff i was immensely passionate about it but then when i had my son at a pretty early age i was only 23 years old when i had my son it's obviously very difficult to travel the country then watching football you got commitments as a dad man and uh, from there it, it all kind of fizzled out but the reason why i picked football is because it is one of the highest liquidity sports in the world so it's very different to ufc live betting in many ways and we're going to talk about some of those ways now so one of the biggest problems with live betting the ufc is even though we all love the ufc and it is a big global sport uh, the problem with the ufc is it's nowhere near as big as a major sport like football it's not on the level of M nfl or nba it's got a good hardcore you know group of fans that love it but it's not on the level of football there's no world cup uh, you know of ufc UFC doesn't do the kind of ratings or numbers that the football matches do. It's just in a league of its own. So because it's got more eyeballs, because it's popular in pretty much every country on the planet, the max bet limits are a lot higher because ultimately max bet limits are just a percentage of the overall money wagered on a particular sport. So because the UFC is kind of a small sport, to be fair, max bet limits are going to be lower. With football live betting, the sky's the limit it's the highest liquidity sport in the world by an absolute mile like i say there's no world cup of nfl it's just not a thing football absolutely fucking massive so the max bet limits are absolutely huge for context i can bet more money on a freaking vietnamese premier league game than i can a ufc main event and it's not even close like by an order of magnitude i can bet more that's one of the reasons why i focused on football betting because if i'm going to try and crack a new sport and go down a road where i'm going to be doing something which eliminates all of these issues i've had with ufc live betting over the years i want to focus on the best of the best so football is the perfect storm for me because i've been passionate about it my whole life i loved it my whole life and it just also happens to be the highest liquidity sport in the world and because it has got the highest liquidity in the world it's the most popular sport in the world by a mile you can also earn way more profit per betting account so betting sites will sh still shut you down when you live bet football but if they shut you down after maybe two three four thousand dollars profit live betting the ufc when you live bet football you might be able to earn 10 15 20 thousand dollars per profit which is a big difference you know it enables you to earn way more per account and make much better use of your time because you can grow your accounts to much higher higher balances on top of that when it comes to football live betting you could place bets on exchanges and brokerages which is an absolute game changer for any of you guys in the same position as me which will be many of my members you know that there's virtually no liquidity available on betting exchanges for ufc because it's, again a very niche sport and there just isn't isn't very very much liquidity there the max bet limits are tiny on top of that 
on brokerages, the live betting experience is very, very poor because we know with UFC live betting, the odds are constantly becoming suspended and changing all the time, and the brokerage acts as a middleman. So when you place the bet with a brokerage, they then have software which goes and places bets on the betting site that you can't get access to, just in China or you know wherever or, or, you know, wherever the betting site is. The problem is if the odds change or get suspended in between the time that you place the bet on the brokerage, the brokerage places the, the bet on the actual site that you can't gain access to, then the odd will the, the bet will just get rejected. So brokerages and UFC live betting are not good. Whereas with football, the odds move much slower because liquidity is so high, they hardly ever get suspended. They only really get suspended if there's a goal or a penalty or a pending VAR decision that could result in a, VA, a, a red card, something like that. But that's very rare. The majority of a football match, the odds are always open and they don't change that much. The reason why the odds jump around all the time on UFC live betting is because liquidity is so low it only takes a small amount of money to move the odds a lot and because liquidity on football is absolutely massive it takes a lot of money to move the odds which makes it a lot easier to get in bets on brokerages and exchanges so that's some of the reasons how football betting is very different from UFC live betting so now I want to talk to you guys about the journey that I've been on over the last year with football betting so last august july time when the euros were running i started to bet on football pretty regularly and i was doing well and because i was doing quite well many of you will know in my community i started to share my bets with the guys in my in my vip chat room and if you're in my vip chat room back then you will remember that throughout september and october we made absolute bank we absolutely crushed it we were betting the Champions League and Europa League almost every week. And the winning runs we were going on were absolutely insane. So straight away, I was like, oh my God, like, surely it can't be that easy. Like, I might have cracked this, you know, like, I'm making way more betting football than I ever have done betting the UFC. And this isn't even a sweat. Like, I don't have to sit here for hours researching. Like, I'm making bank. This is like the best thing ever. And then after September and October, when we'd done so well, I started to get carried away, started to feel myself, started to get overconfident. And then in November, we went into an international break where there was no more club football, no more Champions League, no more Europa League. And I steamed headfirst into this international break and started to bet on all, all the international games and got absolutely destroyed. Like it was bad, like decimated. I think I went like, one and eight or something on one of the days which was unheard of when we were betting champions league and europa league i think i can't remember who said this in the vip chat room the other day but someone said we won something like 14 bets in a row on champions league europa league and then to go from that to then the following month in this international break to go oh and eight or one and eight something like that i was like well that was gr fucking that was clearly just you know a good run bit of beginner's luck you know obviously the bubbles burst right i was like you know everyone assumes that football everyone says that football is the hardest sport in the world to bet because it's the highest liquidity sport therefore the most efficient market i was like well you know it was a good run but clearly this is not something that can be beaten we got decimated in november and i was crushed um you know i remember back then you know i was posting all my bets in the vip chat room and you know guys lost a lot of money because they won all this cash throughout september and october when we were crashing on champions league europa league and then they gave a big chunk of it back in november and and it, it crushed me man you guys know i do not like letting people down it is my least favorite thing to do in the world and i feel a lot of personal responsibility for our performance so when that happened i was like oh i fucked that man i, I shouldn't have i shouldn't have even got into this in the first place what was i thinking should have just stuck to ufc but then time's a good healer, right? And, you know, a couple of days passed where I took a break and then started to dip my toe in, you know, back into the water and started batting again and started winning again when club football came back. And I didn't make this connection at the time. We'll get, we'll get more into this in a little bit, but I started winning again. And that, that gave me encouragement to think, you know what? I was doing great 
then we had a really bad patch but now i'm doing okay again like maybe there is something to this maybe i can figure this shit out maybe i can crack it and then after that bad patch in november i went on to do well towards the end of the year like in december i did pretty good so because i started to do well towards the end of last year you know after that bad run in november did pretty good in december i thought what would happen if i applied the same principles, the same professionalism, the same dedication, the same attention to detail that I apply to my UFC betting. What if I did that to football? Like, What would be possible? Could I be profitable at football? Can we actually do this? Can we actually crack this? Because running from last summer towards the end of 2021, I wasn't like tracking results or anything like that. I had no idea how I was performing. I had no idea what kind of bets were performing well, which ones weren't. I knew I was making a lot of money because my account balances were growing like crazy. I was earning more money than I'd ever had then. It was absolutely insane. But I didn't actually know in units how well I was performing. So I thought, it's a brand new year. And the 1st of January, I'm going to start tracking my bets and being you know, really serious about you know, learning from mistakes, trying to not make mistakes, trying to control my monkey brain, control the tilt, the impulsive behavior, the temptation to chase losses, the greed, all the things that get in the way of us being profitable as gamblers. I'm going to be so dedicated to this and take it just as seriously as I take UFC betting. And I'm going to do that for a year and I'm going to see what can be achieved after one year. And as you can see, straight out the gate, straight out the gate we started grinding out profits from the very beginning of the year so we started the year very 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 strong and i was so happy with this performance especially after november i was still quite low on confidence at the beginning of this year because of how bad november was during that international break and again i started to feel that euphoria and that confidence like oh my god like i can actually do this i was doing really well at the beginning of the year you can see here made about 10 or over 10 units that month and i was like my god we're actually doing it it was one of those things where i couldn't believe it because all my life i've been well, not all my life but for many many years now i've been betting ufc and I haven't been able to reach my potential because these account restrictions and closures and finally i've found something where i can reach my potential so then going into march i made money in december january february and i was really high on confidence i was doing great but i was only betting the top leagues just like going back to september and october 2021 i was only betting like premier league championship champions league europa league the top stuff so then it got a little bit greedy and I thought, well, if I've made, you know, all this money betting on, you know, just a small amount of football, only certain leagues, imagine how much I could make if I started betting all kinds of football. Because there's leagues running, you know, 20 hours a day, 365 days a year. You can bet football on Christmas Day if you want to. I can wake up in the morning and bet Asian and Australian football. I can bet European football in the afternoon and evening, and I can bet South American football at night. And if I do that, I'm going to make absolute millions because if I keep this level of performance going, well, I can like 10x my results because if I'm betting 10 times more football, I'm going to earn 10 times more money, right? And you can see what happened is the month that I went into with that mindset and the plan to bet all these different leagues i got absolutely fucking destroyed absolutely destroyed lose 10 units that month and i am crushed again all the feelings resurfaced that i had back in november where i think i'm a fraud it was just a good run i got lucky i've been found out um, you know this was all luck I can't be profitable betting football. It's impossible. No one can do it. It's the most efficient betting market in the world. Why is I even bother trying? I should have just stuck with MMA. And then, same thing happened in November. A few days pass. Time is a great healer. And I start to calm down and just think about 
what happened in that month how can i go from earning over 10 units in this month to losing 10 units the following month right it, it just doesn't make any sense like what could be so different and then i started to think about were there any correlations between this month and november were there any similarities did i do anything the same was there anything different in those two months because what's crazy is when you first start to do something you would assume that that would be when your performance would be the worst right because you haven't been doing for doing it for very long you haven't really built up that much experience haven't had the chance to learn from your mistakes so you expected to take a while to become profitable but it wasn't like that for me with ufc actually when i first started live betting ufc i was pretty much profitable day one and the same can be said for football like i say from july 2021 to march 2022 which isn't that far off a year i'd only had one losing month which was november 2021 which is crazy right but then when i have this losing month in march i'm like what did i do differently in that month what did i do differently in november and the penny eventually dropped where i realized i had gone away from betting top level european football so in november the reason why i took a big loss was because i bet international games during the international break and in march I started to bet all the other leagues, Asian football, Australian football, South American football, lower league European football. And I made a loss in both months. So then I was like, damn, there's a correlation there. And because I've identified that correlation, that's something for me to work on and fix. Now, with the type of guy I am, I'm quite stubborn, quite ambitious. I wasn't about to just consign myself to not being able to be profitable at these leagues or these levels of football because when someone tells me something i can't be done i want to do it i want to prove them wrong but i knew that i would have to change my strategy and adapt so what became clear to me in march when i you know went back and analyzed all my results was that i had built up certain strategies and techniques which are really effective for making money on some leagues but those strategies and tactics were not effective when i bet other leagues in actual fact they, they, it, it, it can go the complete other way and cost you money so where you see this break even month here and i've put here that i've only had three losing months in the last 15 months because i do count this as a losing month because i think i was down like 0.2 units or something like that but really my i have only had three losing months since july 2022 which was november this month here and this month here so where you see this flat break even month this is the, this was basically the month of me figuring shit out where i was like right i'm gonna take things slow and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and figure out what works well and what doesn't work well and i'm gonna do more of what works well and less of what doesn't work well and eventually if i keep experimenting and i keep tweaking and testing these strategies over time i should be able to work out the stuff that works really well and focus on that and i should be able to work out the stuff that doesn't work well at all and, and abandon that and this month here this break even month was the start of that process so then you can see the next month i start to cut back on those things that i learned didn't work so well and ramp up the stuff that i knew did work well and these two months here were bet in all leagues so whereas after november 2021 at the beginning of 2022 i went back to betting just top level european football Th from here on out i was betting everything women's football venezuelan premier league you know vietnamese premier league korean k2 second division literally everything so all the profits you see here this is me betting everything exactly the same stuff i did in this month and you can see i really just started to figure stuff out so in this month here you can see you know a small profit of five units which is still amazing but five units and that's just me cutting back on the stuff that didn't work so well and doing more of the stuff that did 
and then where you see this huge month here where I made almost 20 units of profit in a month this was me basically going let me just for one month only do the stuff that I know works really well and I'm going to see what happens and as you can see the end result was an absolutely massive month with 20 units of profit so now I'm starting to prove a concept where I've got these strategies these tactics in my head that you know I've tested across a very big sample size I know they work well and the, the end result me implementing only those you can see is 20 units because I took away all the types of bets which had more risk lower win rates which could potentially eat into those profits and dilute my win rate to term, dilute my return on investment and then where you see these two months here where I earned about five units of profit each month this was me being confident enough with everything that I'd learned over the last year because as you can see here you know this this month here is June so by this point I've been betting football pretty seriously for over a year by this month I was pretty confident that I knew what worked well and what didn't but there were certain aspects of the stuff that I'd been doing which I wanted to experiment with more because I felt I could do even better and discover even more things that worked well so where you see these two small profitable months you know five units still amazing if I earned five units betting football for the rest of my life I'd be quite happy with that but relatively speaking when you look at this month this month this month you know they're quite small winning months right so in these two months I do more experimentation which is why the profit isn't high and then at the start of the football season I wanted to take everything that I had learned over the past year and just for that one month again only focus on the things that worked really well the things that I knew worked really well which is exactly what I did here and you can see we got a similar result around 20 units of profit but what's very interesting about this month is that I actually placed around 30% less bets than I did in any of these months so I earned more profit in this month than I did in any of these months and placed less bets and the reason being there just weren't that many games this month there was an international break um, you know there, there just weren't many games running so there weren't as many games to bet and yet I still managed to bank a huge profit and that makes me wonder if there were a normal amount of games in that month you know would I have gone on to earn 30 40 units of profit that month would have had a pullback and you know ended at the month with 15 10 units profit I don't know but to earn 20 units of profit in a month where you know I didn't uh, didn't have tons of games to bet on it's kind of crazy so that's what I've been working on over the last year doing extreme in experimentation just learning from my mistakes you know looking at what works well looking what doesn't doesn't work well and just ramping things up and just doing extreme extreme experimentation on different kinds of bets different types of team different types of leagues it's been amazing and at this point because the sample size is so big that I've been able to generate this profit from so this profit has been generated from a sample size of about 1500 bets which is pretty incredible considering I've placed those bets since the beginning of the year so you guys know I've been putting in an extremely large amount of time uh, dedicated a, a lot of time to this man placed 1500 bets on football you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of work since the beginning of the year and it's paid off because now I know that there's no way that I could produce this profit over a sample size that big unless I was on to something so at this point I'm pretty sure that I've cracked football betting which is why I'm very excited to announce that I am now sharing my bets with you guys. So football betting tips are now available. You can sign up if you want to at mmabettingtips.com forward slash football. The rest of this video is going to focus on what you can expect from this service and what my future plans are and how football betting is very, very different from live betting on the UFC. Now, What's very interesting about me offering football betting tips is that I know that I've got so much room for improvement. So 
when you look at the profit that I've already been able to grind out and what I've already achieved, this was me being a total noob and learning from the job. Over the last year, I've done so much experimentation and learned so much that there hasn't, and not enough time has passed for me to fully feel the benefit of that learning yet. And I know that I've still got so much learning to do. Football is such a complex sport, such a massive sport that, you know, it'll be many, many years before I'm even close to thinking, you know what, I've got this fully cracked. But the fact that up until now, I've still been able to grind out the level of profitability I have, I think it's, it, it's super positive. And my plans for football betting are very big. I want to talk to you a little bit about my plans because when it comes to football betting, the scope is absolutely massive. You can earn tens and tens and tens of millions of pounds, tens of millions of dollars from live betting football because the max bet limits are there, the liquidity is there, and you can place bets on brokerages and exchanges, which means you don't have to worry about being shut down for earning too much cash. So the sky is the limit with football. And because of that, I want to maximize our potential for profitability on football as much as i can now at this stage is early days i have no idea what the future holds i don't know if the bubble will burst and i'll never make money on football ever again i don't know if you know i don't i don't know if 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 i'm going to be able to keep this going right past performance doesn't indicate future results but with the sample size i've built up i'm pretty confident at this stage that i've cracked football betting i know what i'm doing and now I really want to grow things to the next level. So when it comes to the money that I'm charging for the football betting tips, I don't actually need that money. Now, of course, money is very, very nice. But I earn enough from my MMA UFC stuff to live pretty comfortable. It's not like I need the money from fo selling football betting tips for anything in particular. So I've got big plans for what I'm going to use that money for. So many of you guys will have heard of a business in the UK called star lizard and star lizard is basically an analytics company which do a lot of research on different sports predominantly football to provide information that betting syndicate headed up by the owner of brighton hove albion football club tony bloom can then use to make betting decisions and i've been doing a lot of research on this company star lizard and what I've been doing over the last year is kind of what they do, but I've been doing it on a much smaller scale because they've got a team of around 30 analysts and I'm just me, like one set of eyes, one brain. My plans for football betting tips is to really scale things up in a big way. So what I want to do is ultimately use the money from selling football betting tips to employ analysts to increase the amount of money that we can hopefully make from betting on football because the way i do things at the moment is i can only focus on two football games at any one time so i'll be watching one on this monitor one on that monitor but there's hundreds of football matches that take place every day what i can do is train analysts in how to spot certain scenarios that can unfold in football matches which make them very favorable for live betting I can only scan and monitor two games at one time to try and spot games that those scenarios start to you know, present themselves in. But if I had extra people working for me, they could be watching two games each and they could say, hey, also, I'm watching this game in the Colombian Primera B. You know, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. I think this bet, based on my training, you know, could be a good option you know could, you know could, could be something to look at do you want to come and take a look at this and so what that would do would scale up the number of potential bets that we could have which would obviously potentially mean a lot more profit because i know i can train people into the things to look for which can potentially result in in a really good bet now they may not have the gambler's mindset the mentality the discipline control the ability to control our monkey brain and all that to be profitable betting themselves but i have that if they can just scout the positions for me then i can come look at it take everything into account and then decide to pull the trigger but that's huge because where you've got hundreds of football matches taking place in a day i can only monitor two games if i get an analyst 
that's four games that can be monitored. If I get another one, that's six games that can be monitored. If I get another one, that's eight games. So what I'm looking to do with these football betting tips is I'm not interested in making money from them. I'm interested in reinvesting it to scale up the other side of things, which will ultimately enable me to earn an order of magnitude more from the actual bets on brokerages and exchanges. Because realistically, selling betting tips to people is a very small market. Not many people want to pay money for betting tips, right? My business, my, my the UFC side of my business doesn't grow that much. I don't get many new people join because it's a difficult business. 99% of people in this business are scammers. They just go on Instagram with their Gucci track suits, their diamond chains, driving Rolls Royces and, you know, sell people picks that are not profitable. And so it's really difficult for guys like me to, uh, you know, attract people to pay for my services because everyone thinks I'm a scammer and I don't fucking blame them. If I were them, I'd probably think I was a scammer too. So I know I'm not going to make hundreds of millions. I'm not going to get rich selling betting tips on the internet. It's, it's impossible. The market's not big enough. The way I can do it though is earning tens and tens and tens of million from betting on football. And the way I can get there faster is by creating a team of people that can help me. So that's a big goal of this. So the way I look at this is this is all all this is kind of like a Kickstarter campaign. You know where Kickstarter is a website where if a business has got a product or service, they can, you know, if maybe a business has got, someone's got an idea for a product or service or a business wants to launch a product or service, but they don't have the money to do it. They can post the product or service on Kickstarter. People pay for the product and service before it's developed. And then when it's developed, they get the product or service. It's kind of what this is. I, I will start this on a small scale myself from my own bets and then the money that the betting tips will generate will enable me to employ people to help me which will hopefully scale things up, place more bets and hopefully long term absolutely crush. That is the goal. So the betting tips are available now. They will be delivered by Telegram because of course when it comes to live betting every second counts. You've got to act fast. So when you buy the betting tips you will be invited to download the text file after checking out, which will contain a link to a Telegram channel. You join that and I post all my bets in there literally within seconds of me placing them myself. So try the lock in the bets as fast as you can if you're thinking about joining. Every second counts. They're all live bets. Really important to get in fast because a lot can change in football very, very quickly. Um, and yeah hopefully uh, if this is something you're interested in hopefully this is a start of something absolutely huge hopefully this is start of something very 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 special i am excited about it and uh yeah let's move on the rest of this video is going to be focusing on what you can expect uh, in a bit more detail so football live betting is obviously very very different to ufc live betting for many reasons as you can see here mr ronaldo looking a little bit sad and robbie lawler and uh Rory McDonald going to war here in the picture on the left. So let's start off with the first reason why UFC live betting is very different to football live betting. The first reason being, we've already brought this up a few times in this video, it is the number of bets placed every week. So there are literally hundreds of football matches that take place every day. Not every day of the week, you know, some days are quieter than others, but generally speaking, you're going to have a minimum 50 to 100 football matches to bet per day. On a Saturday and Sunday, you may have thousands of football matches to bet in just one day. So with the UFC, we only get an average of 12 to 14 fights per week. And if those UFC fights aren't particularly good from a betting point of view, there's not a lot we can do about it. That's all we've got to work with. With football betting, we get so many games to bet that we just end up with placing a much higher volume of bets so on average i bet between 5 and 15 times a day so every single day of the week you should get between 5 and 15 bets on football this is crazy because if you think about an entire month of live bet in the ufc we may only have you know 15 bets on the ufc in the entire month i might have 15 bets on a Monday when it comes to football. So the volume of bets on football is so much higher. It's just a completely different ball game. So one month of live betting football 
is the equivalent of one to two years of live betting in the UFC. So if you think about it, there's about 500 UFC fights per year. On a Saturday afternoon, you're going to have over a 1,000 football matches uh, across the world. So you can expect a very high number of, uh, of bets with this service. And uh, it's a whole different ball game to the UFC. Like I say, I bet on every league around the world. So, you know, some days there won't be many bets, but for the most part, you can expect to receive, you know, minimum of, say, three up to as many as 15 bets per day. I also want to use this slide as an opportunity to talk to you about the difference in expectations as well. So when it comes to football betting, this is a high volume game. So the goal is to place a lot of value bets over a decent sample size and try and earn a small percentage of profit over the volume of bets that you place. So when it comes to UFC live betting, because we don't have many fights to bet, there's only 12 to 14 a week, we need to be, you know, like an absolute sniper, right? We can't afford to take losses because we don't have many bets to place in the first place. Every, every, every win really counts. We, we have to make them count. When it comes to football betting, small gains should really be appreciated. So, for example, when it comes to UFC live betting, you know, we want to be making a solid unit, you know, or two units, a solid three units every weekend because we we don't we we need to right we only get three events a month when it comes to football betting small gains should really be appreciated let me show you what i mean so say for example we placed 10 bets in a day and we ended the day after 10 bets with only 0.5 units of profit now by ufc live betting standards if we placed 10 bets and we only ended up with 0.5 units of profit that would be pretty shit we'd all be very disappointed with that that's a bad return because we're only, we're, you know we're 12 14 fights a week we gotta make the most of it right we're only placing two three bets a weekend but if we earned 0.5 units of profit on football per day 0.5 times 30 days in a month that would equate to 15 units of profit so it's about shifting your expectations with football we're placing a high volume of bets trying to make a small percentage from those number of bets we've placed so 0.5 units of profit across 10 bets might not sound a lot but 0.5 units of profit every day of the week is going to add up to big gains so that's which is one of the ways in which football betting is very different to ufc betting so the next way that is very different is that we can afford to be more selective with the ufc where we're only getting 12 to 14 fights per week we're really at the mercy of the matchmaker and we all know their events which are just absolute trash for betting there's nothing you can do the matchups the stylistic you know the way guys match up stylistically it's just not good for betting there's nothing we can do about it very few opportunities for us to make money you know on certain cards football is not like that at all which is one of the reasons why the volume of bets i place is so high if you've got 50 games, 100 games running on a Monday, if you've got 1,000 games running on a Saturday, you're going to be able to find a lot of bets. And you can focus on the high-quality bets that you know are value bets. You know, you haven't got to take high-risk gambles, which is you a know, marginal bit of value here and there on the UFC because you know that's all you've got to work with. With football, you can sit back, relax, be patient, chill, calm and only fire when you see a really strong position. And this is one of the th one of the things that I absolutely love uh, about betting football. So at this point, you're probably thinking, well, our win rate when we live bet the UFC is insane, right? We, we, we make a lot of money live betting the UFC and our win rate is very, very high. Um, it, some people wouldn't even believe how high our win rate is live betting the UFC. So at this point, you're probably thinking, well, if I can be more selective live betting football, surely that should mean our win rate on football should be even better than it is on ufc but it isn't because they're very different sports and there is one layer of additional risk with betting football which completely changes the game so if you think about mma you've got two guys that fight each other right and ultimately unless the judges get it really badly wrong at the end of 15 minutes or at the end of 25 minutes the guy that performed the best is the guy that wins the fight you know very tiny percentage of time like 0.5 percent one percent of fights end in a draw but for the most part the 
the better fighter, the, the guy that performs best, ends up winning the fight at the end of the 15 minutes. Football is not like that. There's obviously a time limit and a game can end in a draw. So the reason why the win rate on football is actually lower than the win rate on the UFC is because not only do we have to predict the correct outcome, but we also have to predict the correct outcome by a certain time. Whereas with UFC, we only have to predict the correct outcome. As long as we get the prediction correct, we predict the, the fight that's going to perform the best, we win. In football, we can pre predict the, the team that will perform the best, but we still might not win if they don't get the job done before the game is over, because the game can end in a draw. So that adds a huge additional layer of risk to bet in football, changes the dynamic completely, changes the way you really need to look at things. And as a result... Um, it, uh, it, it, it means a lower win rate on football, which is why this is a volume game, whereas UFC is a sniping game where we can maintain a very high win rate and a very high return on investment. So, having said that, what this does do, having such a huge sample size of football games to bet on and being more selective, that does enable us to use our psychological edge to be profitable so you guys know i talk a lot about how it's easy picking winners in sports it is not difficult to be profitable betting ufc or profitable betting football we can all pick winners the difficult thing is controlling our monkey brains controlling the impulsive behavior the tilt the greed temptation to chase losses the pressure the anxiety the stress the self-doubt the feeling of imposter syndrome all these things are what what are difficult to make it you know profitable as a long term better on any sport but once you've trained your brain to have that gambler's mindset which i have i've obviously been doing this a long time that can give us a huge edge because now not only do we have the the, the mentality to be profitable betting on sports but we also have a huge pool of games to pick our spots from and we're not going to be tempted to go bet a game that we know isn't good for betting because we trained our brain to just stay away, walk away and, you know, not be greedy and not, you know, not get sucked in. So that's something interesting uh, for us to think about as well. So another reason why UFC live betting is very, very different to football live betting is that it comes with extreme variance every month. And here you can see a young Fire Nord fan who is not very happy over something and then some euphoric England fans celebrating something england have clearly done very very well there so expect extreme variance with football and i do mean extreme because what you've got to think about is if we know that there are 500 bets you know five if we know that on average there are 500 fights a year for ufc and we know that there are more than 500 games on a single saturday with football and we know that you know, one month of football betting is the equivalent to one to two years of UFC betting. What that means is all the highs and lows that you'll experience in one to two years of live betting UFC with me will be condensed down into one month of football betting. So during just one month of football betting, you are going to feel the highest highs where you feel invincible and euphoric and you feel like i'm going to be a fucking billionaire this time next year and nothing can stop me trust me i've felt all this the highest of highest of highs where you'll win 15 bets in a row and then you'll also be brought right back down to earth and crushed losing 10 bets in a row getting decimated feeling the bubble has burst feeling you've just been lucky up until this point and it's all over and it's the end of the world you will get that feeling both those feelings every month and i've literally had both those feelings every month for the last well since january when i've been taking this really seriously so just be ready for that obviously for the most part we make a profit almost every month live betting ufc but recently back in june we had that really bad run right now since then we've gone 20 and 2 on our last 22 bets so we've bounced back in a really big way but we all felt a lot of pain back in June, right? We all remember how bad it was, how crazy things got. Prepare to feel that every month. There are literally, there are literally 
at least one or two days every month where I feel like quitting. I feel like I can't do this. It, I, I'm a total fraud. I've got a major, I get major imposter syndrome and I'm like, what, what was I thinking? Like, there's no way I can do this. And then a few days pass, get my head back in the game and I bounce back. I was literally feeling like that like two months ago. So I know it's going to come back at some point. So just get ready for that extreme variance. But it swings both ways. You will have brutally difficult evil runs, which will hurt you very bad. But you'll also have those crazy runs where you win 10, 15 bets in a row and you think this is fucking, this is the best thing ever. So what's really important is to be prepared for that so that when it happens, you can recognize it. When we're having a really good run, you don't start to get carried away and betting more and overextending yourself because obviously when things inevitably swing back in the other direction and we have you know a good number of consecutive losses you don't want to give all your profit away so biggest piece of advice i can think the biggest piece of advice i can give you if you think they're coming with me on this journey is be very i'm telling you right now man be very aware that it swings like crazy so bank those profits and protect them when we're making them and try not to freak out too much when we're getting fucking destroyed because you will experience both those swings on a monthly basis. Now I will say this, I have got a hell of a lot better at making the swings less extreme. That's one of the areas I've improved a lot. They're still there. But they're not as bad. So whereas before I might lose maybe 10, 15 bets in a row. Might, now maybe I lose like 6, 7, 8 bets in a row. While I still win at times 10, 15 in a row. Um, I can actually show you the kind of runs that I'm talking about. So for example, let me just make sure you're seeing this okay. Yeah. So this is the database of results that I've got. And I block some stuff out that... Um, don't really want betting sites to see but you can see the results on the far right here and you can see good win rate here very good uh, you know across these 10 bets we go one two three four five six and three pretty good right we go to the next page we go one two three four five six seven eight and one brilliant really really good we go to this page one two three four five six seven eight eight and one again so you can see we are absolutely crushing and then we start to get a few more losses mixed in but if we go back so there you can see how well things can go you know six and six and three eight and one eight and one you're making big money during those days and if we go back slightly before that we can see here we've got one two three four five six losses in a row which is really seven losses in a row because this is a double stakes bet i don't place many double stakes bet but you can see one there so you know we go eight and one on one day eight and one the next day go six and three and it's all good but just before that we lost seven bets in a row so that's the type of extreme variance that you can uh, you know you can expect so probably need to show you as well if you want to sign up you can actually just go there probably should have shown you that earlier on just sign up now and you're in but anyway back to the presentation so on to the next slide now this is where i just want to talk to you about my schedule because obviously ufc live betting is my bread and butter has been for a long time there's a new project that i'm working on this is like a side thing to ufc something that i can do throughout the week but ufc is still my focus on weekends so this guy this gives you an idea of my schedule on an average week so monday to wednesday every week i am in the european time zone european sleep cycle so i will bet asian and australian football in the mornings and then i will bet european football in the afternoon and evenings that is monday to wednesday Thursday and Friday is when I adjust my sleep cycle, my time zone, to the US time zone. Because obviously UFC events are broadcast, uh, go on till 5, 6 a.m. in the morning in the United Kingdom. So I have to adjust my time zone, my sleep, towards the end of the week so I can still be fresh, wide awake when we're live betting these fights throughout the middle of the night in the UK. So Thursday and Friday when my sleep cycle switches, I stop betting 
Asian and Australian football because I'm in bed in the morning and instead I bet European football in the afternoon and evening and then I bet South American, Central American football in the middle of the night. So that'll switch to like um, Brazilian Serie A, Brazilian Serie B, Argentinian Premier League, Peruvian Premier League, all that stuff, as well as the MLS, Mexican Liga MX, all that sort of stuff. Now on Saturdays and Sundays, I don't place hardly any football bets, which may sound crazy to you because obviously they're the two biggest games of the week for football. But again, this is where the flexibility of football is absolutely incredible. Because just because Saturdays and Sundays are the biggest days of the week for football doesn't mean they're the best days for betting. If anything, I kind of struggle to live bet on Saturdays and Sundays because I find them overwhelming. You know, Saturdays and Sundays, you you might have hundreds of games running at any one time. And I just get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of stuff that I need to monitor. So I actually perform way better throughout the week where, you know, you might only have 50 to maybe 200 games running midweek. Spread out across a 24 hour period. And I can monitor a smaller amount of games, really zero in on them and, and focus in on them and get a really good read of everything that's happening. And, uh, as a result, there's there's no need for me to bet weekends. There's more than enough football Monday to Friday. And like I say, UFC betting is still my main priority. And my weekends are taken over by UFC. So I live bet football Monday to Friday. I live bet UFC Saturday. And then Sunday is my day off. My wife would kill me if I, uh, if I live bet on Sundays. Now, having said that, I do still place bets on Saturdays and Sundays but I don't want you to kind of expect them so from Monday to Friday you can expect a lot of bets from me Saturdays and Sundays I'll just kind of dip in and out whenever I can there's no promises so this slide is also a really important one I've titled in not for entertainment and what I mean by that is with UFC live betting we're all huge fans of the sport and every Saturday night when we all turn up to live bet the fights is almost like an event. We get hyped up in the chat room throughout the week and then there's like a buzz just before the event starts and, and we, get, we get crazy hyped right while the event is taking place. Every week we look forward to those specific fights to enjoy. I can't wait to watch you know, O'Malley PEN this weekend. It's going to be incredible. Like You get really excited for it. Football is not like that at all. So towards the end of last year, where I was sharing a lot of bets in the VIP chat room. People would come in and be like, oh, I can't wait for the Man City game tonight. You're going to be betting it. And I still kind of get a little bit of that now at times. And I want you guys to know right now, football betting is not like that. As you can see here, we've got a picture of some uh, women's football got a picture of a game in the Korean Premier League here and then you've got the highest level of the sport Erling Haaland for Man City but my approach to football is I focus on the games which are going to be more lucrative from a betting point of view so say for example it's a Tuesday and you've got massive Champions League games that night say Man City are playing Real, Real Madrid this isn't about oh, I can't wait to live bet that game tonight with Chris. You know, can't wait. I'm really looking forward to, to Man City, Real Madrid. It's going to be a great game. I can't wait to live bet it. It's not like that at all. I won't be super focused on any specific game. Like, I won't wake up in the morning and be like, oh my God, Barcelona, Bayern Munich in, in, in Champions League tonight. I can't wait for that. I can't wait to sit down in my pants and watch that game. It's not like that at all. What I will do is identify games I could I think could be very good for betting and I will focus on them instead so as an example as an example if I bring this back up so as you can see I'm wearing an old Cardiff City shirt here I grew up watching low level English football my hometown club Cardiff City were in League 2 League 1 pretty much my entire childhood so I've got a pretty good read and understanding of how games at that level work probably more so than the highest level champions league premier league so i tend to perform really really well on those leagues take a look so if i put in english league one 
you can see that even though the sample size is still pretty small, I've gone one, two, three, four, five and one on English League One bets. If we look at English League Two, you can see I've gone three and one. And if I look at the English National League, you can see that I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six and oh. So again, small sample sizes. And the reason why it's a small sample size is games at this level don't tend to be televised, so they're harder to watch. But as you can see, when they are on, I do perform, you know, really well bet betting that level of football. And so, you know, there might be Champions League games on one night, but there might also be League One games on. Which means I might focus more on the League One games than I would Champions League, because I know I might be pro more profitable betting those. So... I just want you guys to know this isn't like a thing where we're all going to be sat down super hyped up super engaged watching certain games you know i might focus more on something else you would not even completely think of so um yeah just just want to make that clear as well so on to the next slide so this slide may come across as a bit negative but i don't want it to be I'm going to explain to you why I've chosen to not do certain things and I hope that you will appreciate where I'm coming from. So earlier on in the video I said that I am 100% confident over the sample size that I've built up that I have cracked football and I know for the rest of my life I can now make money betting on football. However, when you do start to share your bets with other people that adds a whole nother layer of difficulty because now you're not just responsible for your own activity and your own performance, but you've got to manage the weight and the pressure and expectations of other people, which can have a really big impact on your performance. So I know that I'm profitable betting on football for the rest of my life, but I don't know if I can be profitable carrying the weight of, and the pressure of everyone else's expectations, the stress that comes with that. So as a result, there will not be any commentary and there won't be any chat room for football betting. So with UFC betting, we have so much engagement. You know, I, I talked to you guys about the bets. You know, we, we do everything together. And that's because I've been betting UFC for 14 years. So I've built up that knowledge. I've built up that experience. I've trained my brain to manage the weight of people's expectations, the pressure, the anxiety that comes from having people rely on you. I can cope with all that with UFC, but I don't feel at all confident that I can do that with football because it's still early days. I'm still a noob. I'm still learning. I do have a good sample size, but ultimately I still have been doing this for a year. So I'm terrified that if I put a chat room in for football betting and start to engage with you guys, I'm really worried that the collective group euphoria and negativity can really affect my judgment and my performance because I do I do feel the pressure man in UFC I'm very good at managing it with UFC but it took a long time for me to get there it took a long time for me to train my brain and I just remember what it was like back in June when we were having a bad run with the UFC and I was feeling a lot of pressure a hell of a lot of pressure and i had the experience to deal with that pressure work through it and come out the other end where we're now you know 20 and 2 on our last 22 bets and of course i've been through this so many times in the past which has helped me build up that experience to always be able to bounce back but i am totally not confident in my ability to manage that emotional side of the game with football and i think that's probably the biggest risk factor to you joining this service if you're interested I know with like 99% certainty I'm profitable betting football, but I don't know how I'm going to cope and perform when everyone else jumps on board because it changes the game, man. Pressure, the pressure is a killer. It, it, it makes things a lot more difficult. So I'm not going to have a chat room for football and I would really appreciate it if you guys didn't, um, didn't take the football betting discussion into the vip chat room because when we're doing well on ufc it's like crazy euphoric and it's amazing but it goes back to what i was saying earlier on 
where you've got to keep your fucking head in the game with football betting because it's so swingy. If you don't, if you don't manage your emotions, the universe will punch you so hard in the dick because it swings extreme both ways. So what I don't want is for there to be all this euphoria in the chat room when we're doing well on football. Everyone's getting hyped up, which can have, you know, it can have an impact on me and how I'm feeling. I'm trying to control that and suppress it because I've learned that that can be dangerous for me. And then, you know, when we're doing bad, it's all negative and doom and gloom and football's terrible and, you know, we're, we're so unlucky, blah, blah, blah. And then that gets me down and I start to lose confidence. I start to get imposter syndrome. I start to think, oh my God, am I a, pr a fraud? Should I have done this? Did I jump in too soon? So I just zero engagement i'm hoping that will help me manage the mental aspect of what i'm trying to do better and in time i hope to get better i hope to you know develop a stronger mindset and get better at dealing with this and then in the future we can bring in that engagement we have with ufc and we can bring in you know a chat room and things like that but right now in this early stage i just want to be kind of distant if i'm honest with you so you know, by all means, talk about football and stuff in, in the VIP chat room. Um, you know, talk about how we're doing. You know, we can discuss, dis, you know, discuss football, no problem. But I really would appreciate it if, like, it, say we win or have some good times. It's not, you know, fucking crazy euphoria in the VIP chat room. Then if we hit a bad patch, it's like fucking death and destruction in, in the chat room. I really, 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 really appreciate it. If you're jumping on board at this really early stage, I would just really appreciate that because it, it, that kind of stuff really can affect my performance and it is the biggest risk to this service failing and really probably the only risk if i'm being completely honest with you the second thing that i want to uh let you guys know is obviously when it comes to ufc betting i give you guys a lot of detail a lot of depth a lot of strategy a lot of tactics i share with you guys every single little detail as to why I've placed a bet, why I think a bet is value. And uh, I give everything away, man. I am a completely open book when it comes to UFC. But unfortunately, that has backfired big time over the years because over the last 14 years since I started betting on the UFC, it has become harder and harder and harder and harder to make money betting the UFC. And I think that I am a big part of that problem. When I first started on this journey a very long time ago, there were literally only two MMA handicappers online myself and Luca Fury now there are fucking hundreds of people breaking down fights and I don't want to blow my own trumpet but a lot of these guys have kind of copied stuff I've done uh, taken principles and stuff they've learned from me and content that I've produced and as a result the, the the MMA betting market is now way more competitive than it used to be it's so much harder to find value bets now because I think over the years, I've been doing this a very long time. I've trained a lot of people in what to do, which means you know they're kind of taking value away from me in the betting lines, which is 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 kind of brutal, man. And you look at the way things you know work in UFC live betting. I share all my strategies and the way we do things. And then you know if people leave the live betting group, they learn so much, and then they can go bet for themselves. And again, they're taking away liquidity from us. They're taking value away from us in the ufc live betting market ultimately betting markets are competitive marketplaces the more money that gets wagered on something the faster the odds decline this isn't something like the stock market where you know if we all buy tesla tesla's going to go up if we all buy bitcoin bitcoin goes up ultimately you know it's a race to get the value in football and where i've been you know sharing so much knowledge over the years has backfired and made my job a lot harder so I don't want to make the same mistake with football. So as a result, I'm not going to be sharing any strategies or any explanations of the logic behind each bet. I'm going to share the bet and that is it. That's all the information you're going to get. And that's not to be a dick, but that's to protect the longevity of what I'm trying to do. I hope that by keeping the secret so secret, these strategies that I use to be profitable betting football will still be profitable a very, very long time from now. And by the time people work out what I'm doing, I'll probably be on a fucking yacht somewhere, um, you know, like all the fucking dicks 
on Instagram, wearing diamond chains and Gucci tracksuits and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, we'll not be sharing any information on the logic behind the bet at all. So I will also not be giving any personalized advice or responding to questions about individual bets. And this is because when people do this, it puts me in a very difficult position. So this time last year when I first started sharing bets on the VIP chat room, I would post a bet, say I would say, okay, I bet on Man City to win or PSG to win. 10 minutes later, someone would turn up in the VIP chat room and say, I just turned up, shall I still place the bet? What I'm basically trying to say is, right, say someone turns up 10 minutes later and they're like, shall I still place the bet? Well, a lot has changed in 10 minutes. It's not the same bet anymore. The odds have changed a lot. The risk to reward ratio has changed a lot. The dynamic of the game has changed a lot. So in 10 minutes time, it's a completely different bet that I have to reevaluate. So if I say no, don't place the bet now. It's a completely different bet. And it then wins. I look like a dick. If I say yes, the bet is still good. Go place the bet. And it loses. I look like a dick. So... I am just putting the bets out there into the universe at the odds they are, at the time they are, and that is it. Because the problem with football is a lot can change in a short space of time. The odds are constantly moving. And not only that, there's loads of ways to bet the same thing. So I might recommend a bet on, say, you know, Bayern Munich to win. And then someone else... 15 minutes later might pop up and be like oh instead of buying to win now would you recommend betting on over 2.5 goals in the game and i'm like oh fuck like i don't know man 15 minutes ago buying were a good bet but a lot has changed since then they're not a good bet anymore or maybe they are maybe the over under is a, is a better bet i don't know so i'm not i'm not going to be responding to any questions about that or giving any personalized advice at all like nothing nada zip because it's just going to get out of control with the amount of bets we're going to be placing with the range of bets you can place on football with how much can change in a short space of time if i were to go down that road i would literally not ever bet on anything i would just literally be sat there answering questions all day on top of that i can't have people dm me and be like oh what do you think about this bet in this game what do you think about this bet in this game because again once we start on this football journey there's literally hundreds of bets a day or hundreds of games a day people are going to be dming me asking me for advice on different games and stuff that i'm not even focused on like it's just too much so i can't do it man and on top of that for the same reason there will be no reviewing or analyzing of bets after games have finished and again this is because I don't want to drive myself crazy. If I have recommended a bet, it's because over many, many months of testing and you know experimentation, that's what I have found to be the best bet at that time. Now, that bet might not be the best bet five minutes after I place it or two minutes after I place it or ten minutes after I place it because things change fast in football. So there's no like analyzing, no reviewing, sure than this different, sure than that different. I'm going to take care of all that. If I go down, we do that a lot with UFC live betting. We analyze every losing bet. If I do that with football, I'm going to go fucking crazy. Because if we are placing 10 to 15 bets a day or 5 to 15 bets a day, and we take, you know, 6 or 7 losses in a day, it's just going to get out of control. So I just want to let you guys know right now, I'm going to try and be really distant when it comes to this service, just to protect, protect my own mentality. Because I know that a lack of confidence, imposter syndrome, the pressure and weight of people's expectations are the biggest risk to this not going well. I know that I can bet football profitably for myself. I don't know if I can do it with all the pressure and expectation put on me. So I just want to have this slide here so that you guys know I am not being a dick but if you ask me a question relating to anything to do with football, I am probably not going to answer you. I, I'm. It's going to be hard for me because I am going to feel like a dick. And I love you guys. It's going to be very, very hard.
but for this to work i need to be really detached and really distant and please just uh, don't think i'm being a twat if i don't respond to, to your questions it's coming from a good place man this is what like i'm not a robot basically and this stuff will affect me so i know in order for it to have the least amount of impact possible i need to try and just fucking distance myself from it so i hope you guys appreciate that the next thing that i want to talk about is the delay and latency so obviously there are different broadcasting you know deals across the world with football so it will i watch football across many many different platforms which means i might recommend bets to you at seemingly really really bad times and this is where you've got to have some common sense and i guess that will come with time but again with me trying to be distant and and you know keep my head in the game if you do run into the kind of issues i'm about to describe you kind of are gonna just have to figure these out for yourself so basically i watch football across loads of different platforms worldwide a varying different you know amounts of delay and latency depending on what platform i'm watching on so say for example you you live in denmark now the danish premier league the danish super league sorry might be on tv in denmark which means you're going to be able to watch danish football with very very minimal delay very very minimal latency but if i'm live betting a danish super league game i'm probably going to have to watch it on some kind of streaming platform which might have a minute or two delay so if i send a bet out and say you know it, you know se- if, if i send out a bet recommending you know a certain team win but literally as i've sent the bet out on your broadcast that team's had a player sent off then i don't know that because i'm one or two minutes behind you had i known that the player was going to be sent off i wouldn't have recommended that bet but because i'm behind what you're seeing i don't know that so at times you're going to have to use a bit of common sense so if i send a bet out you're going to have to think you know uh, should i still place this based on what i'm seeing because the delay latency can make things tricky for me it's just going to be one of those small little nagging issues with this service but it's not going to be an issue very you know it's not going to be a huge issue not going to be an issue very often probably not going to affect very many bets at all it's going to be a total nothing burger but it will happen from time to time because everyone is going to be watching these games on different platforms and i can't watch all games on tv in the uk because some of them just aren't broadcast in the uk so next step i want to talk about the differences across betting sites so there are hundreds maybe even thousands of betting sites across the world at this point every country has their own sites with their own odds their own max bet limits and they're all completely different so the way that i will be sending bets out is when i send a bet out i will give you the average odds available across a wide range of websites so i will generally place bets across about eight different websites and what i will do when sending out the odds on telegram the recommended odds is i will look at the lowest odds available across my eight betting sites and the highest odds available and then i will send out the bet at the odds in the middle so if the best odds i can get on a bet at 2.0 and if the worst odds i can get on a bet at 1.80 the telegram notification i send out will recommend the bet at 1.90 because those are the average odds but they may not be the odds that you can get on your betting sites in your country so what i've noticed about certain betting sites is they do have really bad odds like significantly worse odds than other sites and over a very high volume of bets that will add up so it's really important for you to find a good range of betting sites where you can maximize your profitability because if i'm if i'm betting across 10 different websites and i've got a wide range of betting sites and i'm always sending out the the odds the the average odds some of you if you've only you know if you're only placing bets on one site or if you've only got access to one betting account and that particular betting account 
has got consistently bad odds, which some sites do. Virgin Bet has terrible odds. You're going to be in a position where you're earning way less than you could be. Whereas someone else that might only have one site, but that one site tends to have generous odds more often than not, well, they're going to be making a lot more than you, but you're both still placing the same bets. You know, if I'm recommending bets at, you know, 1.90, and, you know, some people are unhappy because they're only able to get the bet in at 1.80, well, you know, someone else is going to be enjoying it at 2.0 dog odds. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's another little nuance to the service. Just understand that if I send a bet out at certain odds, and those odds are better than what you're seeing. Don't get frustrated. Don't be like, oh my God, Chris is always fucking sending out unrealistic odds. I can never get these. Just understand that betting is a global market with hundreds of betting sites all across the world. Betting sites, brokerages, exchanges. The odds I'm sending out are an average available across a very nice diverse range of sites. So I'm not just picking the best ones. I am giving you a range. So just uh, just know that, just know that. It's good to have a range of different sites. So next thing that I want to talk about is different betting tactics and different options we have to make money that are not available to us when we bet on the UFC. So this is going to be well outside of people's comfort zone. And one of the things that you are going to need to come to learn to expect from betting football. Now, I don't use these tactics that often. This isn't like a massive part of my overall betting strategy. But it is something that I do do from time to time. So when it comes to football, because a game is 90 minutes long, the game can ebb and flow and change a lot. So bets that were really good at one point in a game might not be so good at a different point in the game. So let me give you an example. Say, for example, you bet on Man City to win, okay? And they're playing really well, and it, it game goes into the second half, and there's 30 minutes left to go until the end of the game. And... All of a sudden, Haaland gets injured. And then Bernardo Silva gets subbed. Well, straight away, Man City's probability of winning that game is probably not as high as it was when you placed the bet because their top goal scorer has gone off and one of their creative midfielders, Bernardo Silva, has gone off. Now, generally speaking, the odds don't react too much to stuff like that. So you may have an opportunity to hedge out of a bet because when you place the bet, and Haaland and Bernardo Silva were on the field, there was good value there. Man City had a really high probability of winning. But when those two danger men go off, their probability of winning may be reduced by quite a lot, which means there's no more value in the bet, which means you may get an opportunity to hedge out. Changes in tactics can also flip a game on its head. Um, when players get sent off, it quite often changes the dynamic of the game in a big way. I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how, but that may be another reason why you may need to hedge out. So with UFC betting, we hardly ever hedge out, ever. Fights are too quick, you're too fast-paced. You know, in, fo in, in, in fighting in UFC, if something big happens in a fight, the odds immediately react to it. Remember what I said earlier on, the reason why the odds jump around so fast in UFC live betting is because liquidity is so low, max bet limits are so low, and so it doesn't take much money to move the odds a lot. In football, it takes a lot of money to move the odds, and as a result, there can be really good opportunities to hedge out of positions where the risk to reward ratio has changed significantly, so just be ready for that. Cashing out is also... Um, it's also, uh, you know, a really, really powerful tool in football betting and something that we don't do in UFC betting ever, really. The reason why cashing out is really powerful is because, again, with the game lasting a lot longer, the dynamic of the game can change a lot. So perhaps you've bet on a team to win and they are looking very comfortable and they're playing well and they're in no danger of losing the game. 
but then all of a sudden again maybe a key player goes off injured or they start to come under a lot of pressure the dynamic of the game completely changes and now your bet has a lot more risk of losing than it did you know maybe five minutes ago if you can cash out of that bet at profit that may be something that would make sense in terms of a probability point of view again it's not something i do that often but again it is an option that we can use to make money betting on football so just be ready that's another tactic i use now the third tactic i use at times is really gonna uh, fuck with people quite bad it is going to fuck with people and it is um a very different approach to betting from ufc so time-based betting i don't even know what to call this but basically there may be situations where i recommend a bet that makes absolutely no sense to you like absolutely no sense um i'm actually gonna i don't want to i need to keep the secret so a secret but i am i'm so i'm not gonna actually go into too much detail on this one but there may be times when you're watching a game and i will recommend a bet that makes absolutely no sense to you or any other logical person just know when i do that there's method to the madness and there's usually a reason why i'm doing it and the time-based betting element of that is i might during a game right a lot can happen in 90 minutes I might recommend a certain bet in a football match not with the expectation that that bet is going to win but with the expectation that later in the football match I'm going to be able to bet something else which across both bets will guarantee profit. Now I don't want like I say I'm not going to go into too much detail on that but if ever I recommend a bet that seems batshit crazy and doesn't make any sense at all it's usually a setup for something else i'm planning to do later on in the game like i say not something i do that often but it is again another option another tactic another strategy i can use which is not available to us in ufc because fights don't last long enough football different ball game altogether in fact it is a fucking ball game right ufc is a face punching game okay so now I want to focus on the kind of bets that we're going to be placing so this is just so that you guys that don't really know how football works can get familiar with all the different markets that we're going to be betting so money line pretty self-explanatory where we bet on you know either team to either win lose or for the game to end in a draw we will bet on over unders in a game how many goals there's going to be over one goal over two goals again pretty self-explanatory Double chance is where you can basically bet on two outcomes in a game. So you can bet on a team to win or draw, or you could bet on either team to win. So for example, if Manchester City were playing Real Madrid, you could bet double chance Manchester City, and they that would basically mean that you were betting on Manchester City to win or draw, and the only way you would lose the bet is if Real Madrid were to win. So double chance is just two outcomes. If your betting site doesn't offer double chance, what you can actually do is there's double chance calculators online where you basically put in the money line odds and the double chance calculator will calculate for you how much money you need to bet on the win or the draw to create your own double chance bet so look into that uh, online do some googling you'll find some sites that have got those calculators because some of the sites in the u.s don't don't offer double chance bets but it doesn't matter you can make them yourself so draw no bet is where you uh, basically bet on either team to win and if the game ends in a draw it's a push you get your money back so again Manchester City Real Madrid if you bet on Manchester City to win and the game ends in a draw it's just a push you get your money back Asian handicaps this is where things get very complicated. I could do a fucking hour long video on Asian handicaps. So I'll come back to that in just a second. We'll briefly go over Asian handicaps. Um, but both teams to score, again, pretty self-explanatory. We're just betting on both teams to score in a game. So 
Asian handicaps are a huge part of my betting and Asian handicaps are one of the highest liquidity betting markets in the world. Asian handicap betting market supplies a lot of liquidity to a lot of other smaller betting markets on, on betting sites. Asian handicaps are the uh, betting market in which Tony Bloom, the owner of Star Lizard, the guy that I mentioned earlier on that owns Brighton Hove Albion Football Club, um, his speciality is Asian handicaps. So they're pretty big business as a result of very, very high liquidity bet. They're also quite complicated. So I'm not going to I'm not going to go into detail on how Asian handicaps work here. You know, again, go online, do some research for yourself and, um, you know, figure out how they work. If you don't want to drag this video out, but basically get familiar with how Asian handicaps work on your site. Like I said, I could do a video for an hour fucking explaining um, how Asian handicaps work, which I really don't want to do. Um, the only other detail that I would say with Asian handicaps uh, people often confuse them with standard handicaps and with football um, oh god I've got to really be careful not to get, get carried away on this one Asian handicaps are a big part of my betting standard handicaps are completely different and standard handicaps on football are very different to standard handicaps on other sports so on other sports like NFL, NBA, where you don't really get draws, the handicap betting on those sports is always two-way. Because there's a draw in football, sometimes handicap bets on betting sites for football are three-way. Which means if the game gets tied, you would lose your bet. So every single Asian handicap bet I recommend is always two-way. Which means with the handicap, if the game ends in a draw, we will always get a refund. We will always get a push. So it's really important that you learn about Asian handicaps for your site and know what you're getting yourself into. Again, the best thing is just learn Asian handicaps for your site. Because otherwise you're going to take losses on bets you otherwise would have either won or got a refund on. You really, 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 really find a site which offers good Asian handicaps. It's one of the highest liquidity betting markets in the world. So most sites do offer really good Asian handicap betting, but learn it, man. It's very important. I'm going to move on because otherwise this video will get mad. But it's a, Asian handicaps are very complex, which is why they're powerful. You can make a lot of money from them. Very few people take the time to master them. However, um, yeah, I, I need to just move on from that because this video is going to get out of control. Okay, so an unexpected side effect of betting football and UFC together is that you ultimately end up earning a lot more money from your UFC bets. So earlier in the video, I was saying when you're live betting on the UFC, after you make two, three, four thousand dollars profit, your account will get shut down. But that is because not many people live bet the UFC relative to other sports. So if you're taking money from the bookies, live betting the UFC, if you're taking profits away from them, it's having a big impact on their bottom line. Whereas football, much higher liquidity, much more people bet it. And as a result, you can earn way more per account than you can from betting UFC. So if you earn two, three, four thousand dollars profit on average per account live betting UFC, you should be able to earn ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars per account betting football before the betting site will shut you down. Now, of course, there's no black or white hard rules to this. At the end of the day, if you're giving betting sites spanking, they don't like it. But generally speaking, because winning money at football doesn't have as big an impact on them because of how much money they turn over on a daily basis with football bets, you can fly under the radar for longer and earn way more per account betting football which also has a knock-on effect to your UFC betting activity because think about it if you're betting you know if you're betting hundreds or if you're betting thousands of dollars on football every day of the week and then you just turn up on Saturday nights and bet a few thousand on UFC it doesn't matter how well you're doing on UFC they're going to allow you to keep your betting account open because of all the volume that you're placing throughout the week it dilutes your betting activity in UFC which allows you to keep your betting account open longer 
earn more profit from your UFC bets by being mixed in with all your football betting activity. So the, the two betting on the two sports works really, really well together. And like I say, I've been able to earn more money from you know betting both sports together than I ever did on UFC. One very, very large betting site usually will shut you down by the time you've earned three thousand dollars profit live betting ufc and i've never been able to get an account balance on this particular site past five thousand dollars towards the end of last year i managed to rack up an account balance on that site over thirty thousand dollars by betting football and ufc together so the two bets work very well together then finally we're going to wrap it up by talking about pricing everyone's least favorite thing to talk about and how much i'm going to be charging for this i'm trying to explain to you the reason why the cost is the cost so the price of football bets is going to be pretty expensive because ultimately if you look at the chart if you look at my profitability up until this point if i keep that level of performance going it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work but very quickly people are going to be able to make serious 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 cash from this now that isn't to hype hype people up and get them to go and buy these betting tips that's just being realistic right if you look at the performance up until this point if you keep that going you can make pretty gains uh, pretty big gains very very quickly and the price needs to reflect that you know if i'm going to be sat there six seven eight nine ten hours a day betting football you know i i you know i should get a bit back for that right and that's why the price is a lot more expensive than with ufc because it's the amount of extra time the amount of extra work all the experience has gone into it and the fact that again you'll be getting you know three four five to ten bets almost every day of the week you know like we've already said a few times one month of ufc betting is the equivalent of one to two one month of football betting is the equivalent to one to two years of ufc betting so while the individual price on a monthly basis might sound like a lot it's actually peanuts when you break it down in relative terms because of how much activity there's going to be on a daily basis and the fact that you don't have to worry about account closures you have to worry about you know betting restrictions low max bet limits the sky is the limit with football serious 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 money can be made betting football it's the highest liquidity sport in the world and the price reflects that so there's no subscriptions with the football betting so the way that is going to work is every single calendar month in the year the landscape for football betting looks different in june and july you have an off season you know we've got a world cup coming up in november you know some months have an international break which aren't you know aren't as good for betting and as a result i'm going to be pricing the football bets relating or i'm going to be basically changing the price of the football bets every month in line with what the landscape looks like for that month so for example october the month we're going into it's like the most packed stacked month of football i have ever seen in my life because there's a world cup in november they're trying to cram all the matches that would have taken place in november either side of it in october and december so october's got like double the amount of games it would usually have in a normal month so for that reason pricing is going to be quite high but then in the summer in july when it's the off season there's not many leagues running well i can't charge a high price because there's barely any football running so it's going to be a lot lower so the price will change every month the way it will work is the telegram link will expire at the end of every month every month there will be a new telegram link for a new telegram channel and you'll basically if you want to you know buy access to that telegram group get those notifications at the beginning of every new month and uh the price will change every month in accordance accordance to you know the football um you know the the amount of football we've got another thing that will impact price is obviously performance if i perform really bad if i don't start doing that well you know if, if we don't start to make much profit price is going to come down a lot if i start banging out 20 30 40 unit profits regularly price is going to go up a lot and that's why you've got at the other end of the scale here price of two thousand dollars plus a month because if i'm going to start to average you know 20 to 30 units of profit a month which i do think is possible based on everything that i've learned you know and maybe in one two years from now if we start banging out those levels of profitability 
there's no there's no way that I can give out you know th those kind of bets at that level of profitability for just a few hundred dollars is is not going to happen. So variable pricing will reflect performance and the betting environment, the type of games we've got. So I hope that makes sense to you. And like I say I don't know what the future holds. I might fall flat on my face. This might fail bad. I might lose. You know, I might uh, I might never have another profitable month on football ever again. Perhaps this all blows up in my face, but I promise you, man, I'll work my absolute balls off to keep the level of performance that I've I've had up until this point. I've put so much time into this that I would be gutted if it doesn't work out, man. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. We'll leave that there. I don't know what else to say. It's a really long video, longer than I thought it would be, but there's so much detail to go into that... Um, you know, I had to uh, had to go into everything so you guys know exactly what to expect. So thank you very much for watching. Take care. I love you guys. And uh, hopefully this is the start of something really big, something really special. So nice one, guys. Take care. Bye.